<laughs> All right. Um, so now we'll talk about digestion. Uh, next two chapters will be about digestion and nutrition, and obviously they're interrelated. So let's talk about them. Okay. That's uh, so I should. Okay, so what digestion is, what we eat, okay, is large complex molecules that are in, you know, big huge things and we have to actually break them down into individual components, okay? So the mechanical chewing and stuff breaks it down so the enzymes can get to it um, and break them down into monomers via hydrolysis reactions okay and then that is still all useless until absorption actually occurs absorption um, takes these monomers into the bloodstream to be used by cells so if you don't have the um, ability to absorb the stuff you don't get the effects of digestion okay okay so <clears throat> The digestive tract is open at both ends and uh, it's continuous in the environment. Um, so I saw a joke one of my students posted last time, and it was pretty funny. I'll show you guys. Yes. Um, if two people are kissing, there's a big long tube that connects asshole to asshole. All right, so if you think about that, it's actually true. Okay, um, that tube, that big long tube, is considered the outside of the body and the materials that cannot be digested, never actually enter the body, okay? Um, things that are in the digestive tract are not actually inside the body until they're absorbed, okay? That's why things that secrete into the stomach or into the small intestine are considered exocrine glands because they secrete to the outside, okay? Okay, so this is the functions, secretion, digestion, absorption. Um, uh, I'm sure you guys heard all of this. Okay, um, it's all anatomy, so um, we will skip it. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so the inclination, otherwise known as swallowing, okay? Uh, three parts, uh, oral, pharyngeal, okay? Oral is voluntary, okay? So the tongue actually pushes the uh, bolus into the back of the mouth, and at some point, it hits the pharynx, and it becomes involuntary. So if I was to purposely shove, like, things deep into your throat, you would automatically swallow them without choice. Okay, and you see that in like movies and shit. Um, okay. And then down the esophagus into the stomach. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the esophagus, I'm sure you guys, there's not, not much stuff. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So ferrous esophagus is what happens if you have um, too much acid reflux, okay? Uh, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, okay? Uh, the, the esophagus of the, the epithelium of the esophagus is supposed to be um, stratified squamous, okay? But if you damage it too often, it becomes more similar to the esophagus in the stomach, okay? Uh, and so it is metaplastic tissue, okay? And that actually increases the risk for esophageal cancer, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, so that's why acid reflux is actually bad because every time you have to replace those cells, um, the transformation becomes you know, more and more likely and that's one step closer to cancer, okay? Okay, so all of this is anatomy. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so you, you can read all these on your own. Okay. The important cells here are the out, uh, parietal cells and chief cells that produce the uh, parietal cells produce HCL, chief cells produce epsinogen. Okay. Uh, that's for digestion. Uh, the other uh, important things, uh, gastrin is a hormone that signals to your body that you're digesting things. Um, ghrelin is a uh, signal, so it tells you that, you know, you're full. Okay. Okay, so here you're making HCL. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, function of the HCL. Um, one, it makes it, the pH very acidic. Um, and that actually, um, the pH uh, being that acidic unfolds a lot of proteins that are normally at pH 7. If you take something that's at pH 7, you put it at pH 2, the acids actually start to attack them and unravel the chain. So unraveling the chain is actually important because that makes it really easy to digest. Okay, and break apart. Okay, so it's more closer to the primary structure and takes away the secondary and tertiary folding that makes it harder to digest. Okay, um, pepsin, pepsin actually works on pH 2. Okay, okay, the function of pepsin is it catalyzes the hydrolysis of peptide bonds in the ingested proteins. They, they don't really break them down into digestible units, but they break them down into smaller units that are more easily accessible downstream in the small intestine. Okay? Okay. So they take the ingested protein and cut it down in short peptides. Okay? Which we'll talk about that later. All right, um, acid and pepsin can digest the stomach lining. If I can digest meat, I can digest your own meat. So I can digest my own stomach lining, okay? Um, the the defenses that prevent this one, you do digest the stomach lining, you just grow them back very quickly. So uh, your stomach lining replaces your epithelium every three days. Um, there's a inherent layer of mucus that has a large amount of bicarbonate. The bicarbonate is neutral is uh, neutralizes the acid, and then there's very tight tight junctions between the epithelial cells, which prevent the leakage of the acid past that line. Okay. Okay. Um, Proteins, uh, the end I just used, I mean, which I just explained, uh, starches stop digestion in the stomach because it goes through pH of two. Um, a lot of, you know, elementary and high school, they think, you know, digestion and absorption occurs in the stomach. That's not actually true. Very, very few things are actually absorbed in the stomach. Two important things, one, aspirin, Okay, and other NSAIDs. Um, and two, alcohol. Okay, um, alcohol is absorbed in the stomach. And the reason why that's important, one of the ways to prevent you guys from getting drunk so quickly is to eat a large meal before, um, before you drink. This is why, because alcohol is actually absorbed in the stomach. So if you have a lot of food turning in there, the alcohol absorption slows down, okay?
All right. Peptic ulcers are ultimately erosions of the mucosa. Uh, of the stomach when a lot of them produced by HCL. Okay, the major, major thing that causes peptic ulcers are helopeptic pylori. Okay, um, these guys, they make, you know, most bacteria die in this, but this type of bacteria, they make their own bicarb. And so they, they, they're neutralized the acid by themselves, but they also, they also start chew their way through the stomach lining. And chew the way through the stomach lining, even a little bit, the acid will follow. Okay, the treatment for ulcers, um, like uh, proton, inhibitor, proton pump inhibitors, that's what uh, Prilocyte OTC is, um, there's other stuff, and then antibiotics. Uh, but before there was all this medication, peptic ulcers were the number one cause of surgery in the U.S. Okay. Uh, okay. So, that's... Okay. Um, nano ulcers, so either they know the one them, um, the duodenum is the first part of the small intestine, okay? Um, there's bicarb produced by Brunner's glands here that starts to neutralize the acid, but most of it is actually um, neutralized by bicarb coming in from the pancreas. One of the um, things that the pancreas makes is a large amount of uh, sodium bicarbonate in the pancreatic juice and that is secreted by the pancreas and it neutralizes the acid as it comes through here. Okay. Okay, uh, weight loss surgery. Okay. Uh, so Uh, bariatric surgeries are given to promote weight loss of these people who are prone to blah, blah, blah. So they basically uh, remove most of your stomach, okay? Okay, so you can... Um, Okay, uh, the surgical procedure for this long term weight loss, um, blah, 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 even within a few days, um, even before much weight has been lost. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> all right, well, one thing that I put out here there's, there, there is a new concept um, that suggests that your microbiome actually can can change dr dramatically and changing what your microbiome dramatically can actually promote weight loss and reduce um, insulin resistance, okay? Um, there's obviously a lot more work to be done in this area. Um, and so it's actually a really cool thing, okay? Um, okay. Okay, uh, reflux or um, GERD, okay, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, reflux of the acidic time produces symptoms like heartburn, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and this can um, eventually cause more problems. Uh, esophageal structure, which is damage to the esophagus, uh, Barrett's esophagus, which is very plain, and annual carcinoma of the esophagus, so cancer of the esophagus. Esophageal lining. Okay. Okay. Um, the small intestine starts at the pyloric sphincter and ends at the ileocecal valve. There are three sections the bottom, the genome, and ileum. Okay. Okay. 
the three major things that happen in the small intestine that allow for increased absorption. One, um, the mucosa and, and submucosa are, are um, folded into plique circularis or circular folds, okay? The circular folds allow for increased um, absorption. So what happens is as the food comes through, instead of going through, it spins through. And as it spins, it comes in contact with the surface, okay? More, um, and it therefore gets absorbed more. The surface have microvilli, the villi themselves have microvilli, and this increases surface area. Okay, so here are the circular folds that allow the, the food to spin. Okay. Okay. The small intestine, complete digestion of carbohydrates, protein, and fats, absorption of sugars, amino acids, calcium, iron, um, other stuff, okay? Um, in the jejunum manilium, in the, um, or the water and jejunum, bile salts, B12, water, electrolytes, and ileum. Um, this is very, very rapid due to, um, Increased surface area, um, the villi and microvilli. In fact, the microvilli um, are so numerous, they're usually referred to as a brush border. Okay. Okay, so brush border. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, the villi have capillaries which absorb amino acids and uh, monosaccharides, they can't absorb fat. And so fat gets absorbed into the lacteals. Lacteals are um, lymphatic system tubes, okay? Okay, so the, the tube right here, the middle tube is the lacteal, okay? Okay. Um, okay, so the brush border enzymes are not directly released into the lumen, but they say attached to the plasma membrane with the active site exposed to chyme. Chyme is the food or what's left over of the food by this point. Okay. Um, so the enzymes are attached to the brush border, so that when the food brushes across, it gets absorbed, okay? Um, so here you see the enzymes and what they do. Remember, all enzymes end in the term ASE, and then the term ahead of them tells them what, what it actually is, okay? So sucrase digests sucrose, maltase results, uh, digest maltose, lactase digests lactose, and I'm sure you guys are I've heard of lactose intolerance and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, lactose intolerance. Um, a condition of the greatest prevalence amongst those with uh, African, Asian, Hispanic, and Native American heritage. So uh, a group of basically what happened through evolutionary history is a group of Caucasians um, develop the ability to not turn off lactase, okay? Usually lactase is in infants and because, you know, they feed them breast milk, but usually it turns off in adults. And a group of Caucasians probably um, stop this, they stop turning it off. So now they're able to digest lactose um, even as adults. So they were able to drink large amounts of um, milk, uh, cow milk or goat milk, um, and that actually gave them advantage. So that um, the lactose intolerant, the lactose ability um, spread through uh, the other civilizations, but there's still a large amount of people who are lactose intolerant. Okay.
Okay. Well, that toast might be able to not be digested by these people, but when it hits their large intestine, the the bacteria sitting in the large intestine have no problem with lactose. And so they're going to digest it just like that. And so what the byproduct of that is gas, okay? Uh, they'll produce CO2, they'll produce uh, methane um, and stuff like that. So gas and bloating, diarrhea, and nausea, okay? Okay, so the slow move, these, these waves um, are produced um, by the basement nerve cells called the interstitial cells of Coggle um, and produce muscle um, potential to the smooth muscle. Um, like I said, we, we it, smooth muscle and, and cardiac muscle will contract by itself. What we usually do is we speed or slow things down you can't stop or start them. Okay. okay. So there's a slow waves. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's it. Uh, the large intestines, okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, the large intestine, that's the large intestine, okay. Um, the large intestine, okay, is involved in absorption of water, um, electrolytes. Uh, vitamin K and some B vitamins, in particular B12. Okay, um, so by the time the food enters here, there's not much actual food left. There's about I think 10 to 15 percent is an estimate usually um, that's left. Um, but some of the water is left, and some of the water is reabsorbed. Most of the water is actually reabsorbed in your small intestine, not the large intestine. Okay, but some of it is absorbed in the large intestine, um, the electrolytes, the vitamin K, uh, the B vitamins, okay. Okay, there is a intestinal microbiota, okay, or uh, microflora. Um, okay. Uh, these are all mostly commensal, Okay, uh, the bacteria benefit and we aren't harmed or benefited in any way. Others are mutualistic. Um, they provide us with, with um, a lot of vitamins, in particular B12 and vitamin K. Uh, these are mostly anaerobic because obviously they don't get a lot of oxygen in the in large intestine. Um, the infant receives its initial colonization of, of bacteria from its mother during birth and also later from breastfeeding um, and stuff like that. Uh, and in case you didn't know, babies eat, touch and everything, and it ultimately goes in their mouth and that actually helps build up your know, intestinal uh, microbiota, okay? Okay. Okay, so the beneficial microbes, the uh, vitamin K, B12, okay, they, uh, they make uh, fatty acids, but, you know, so they absorb electrolytes using that. Um, they, they, this is microbial antagonism. They outcompete other worse bacteria, okay, um, and then disruption of the micro Flora can lead to inflammatory bowel disease. Um, 
like too too much antibiotics. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. These guys, okay. Appendicitis, okay. Um, appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix. The purpose of the appendix is not to function in digestion, but it has a lot of lymph nodes in there to um, check for infectious bacteria coming in and a um, population of commensal bacteria that helps uh, replenish intestinal bacteria when needed. So if you have a severe bout of um, diarrhea and stuff, uh, this helps replenish your normal microbiota, okay? Um, okay, appendicitis is the emergency med uh, medical emergency that produces pain in the lower right quadrant. I'm sure you guys already realized that. Um, uh, if the appendix bursts, it is a thousand times worse because now all the bacteria, remember I said the inside of your intestines was the outside of the body? Well, now if the appendix bursts, that is no longer the case. Now all the bacteria that were in, the back, in your intestines are now inside the body, okay? And that, um, that condition is peritonitis. Okay, um, and if that happens, they literally have to go through, they open you up, take out your intestines, wash your intestines carefully and put it back in. And even after that, you stand a really high chance of getting bacterial infection. Okay. All right. So there you go. Uh, most absorption occurs in the small intestine. Uh, we usually don't teach you this until physio, uh, but some of it is left for a large intestine, and obviously you don't absorb everything. Um, about 200 mil per le is left per day to be excreted with feces. Okay. okay. Um, Okay, diarrhea is excretion of excessive fluid in the feces. Okay, so basically what happens is this, okay? Um, when your body realizes there's something wrong, okay, um, in your digestive tract, you want to get that thing, the food out of you as quickly as possible. There are two ways to do it, throwing it up or coming out the back end, okay? Um, and so, that is what uh, viral gastroenteritis does, okay? Um, certain bacteria, um, E. coli, cholera, C. diff, um, produce secretory uh, bacteria by releasing enterotoxin. Basically, they get use, it gets your body to dump uh, fluid into your large intestine, et cetera. Okay, um, defecation. Um, so there's two sphincters, okay, internal sphincter, external sphincter. We actually control the external sphincter for defecation, okay? Okay. Inflammatory bowel disease includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, so IBD. Um, so what happens is there's an increased mucus secretion by goblet cells, and that leads to um, increased intestinal permeability, which leads to erosion of the intestinal mucosa. Remember, the intestinal mucosa has all these um, 
villi and my, or not villi, microvilli. You destroy the microvilli, and that leads to malabsorption issues. Okay. 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 Oh, there you go. All right, we're all stop right here. I'm gonna pick this up um, in part two. Okay, and we'll talk about. So what we talked about was the two. Okay. Um, now we will talk. Next thing we're talking about is the things that plug into the two. All right, and that will be for part two.